underneath go under. There are millions of fish out here, guys. Millions. <laughs> That's one way to let it go. Triple hook up. That's the stuff we want. Good. How was your trip? Yeah, it was good. Here we go. All right. Well, we're back on the water again. And this time, I'm out with Kurt Pengilly from In Excess. So, going up with the big, big boys this time. <laughs> so, we need to catch you a big kingy, right? That's yep. on the gender. Haven't, haven't caught a king before. Tuna and hooked on the marlin, but never caught one. Oh, well, we, we can fix that as well. Well, not today, but we'll do that. But we'll go out. So, what we're going to do first, going to catch a couple of, hopefully some slime eggs, a couple of yakkers, and then we're going to nick round to probably Bluefish Point there and see if we can turn it into a nice kingy or two. Go the kings. Go the kings. <laughs> yeah, a bit of bait there. Oh, they get slimies. Swing it around. It's gotta be slimies, gotta be slimies. There we go. Big one too. Slimy. Look at that one. Perfect. That's all we want. Put him in there. Turn him into a nice big fat kingy. All right. With the bait tank full, we head it off in search of bigger prey. Come here, you. Just like a nose piercing, buddy. What happens after that uh, won't, won't be so good for you, but anyway. Bring him over here. Put him over the side like so. We go. Get out of it. Make them in hard. Freaking birds killing me livey. Get off it. Yeah. Oh, that's a quack. <laughs> I know you'd pick up a few birds, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> Look at them. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Oh, Look at them there now. The sound is full of them. Come on. Be small ones. Give me a big one. Oh, I just missed one. God, what am I doing wrong? There you go, you're on now. That's your first one. Woohoo! Your first kingy. Woohoo! That's what we wanted to see. Wow. That's it. They're good fish, aren't they? Yeah. That's it. Oh, there he is. And your first. Kingy number nice. one. Well done, mate. Yep. There we go. He's a throwback. Throwback. He's just a little bit undersized, probably about two years old. But we'll let this guy go. We'll get you a bigger one. I'm in. Come on. Done. Here we go, buddy. Right, oh. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was onto that. I knew what was happening. Yes. <laughs> Oops. Looks like there's heaps here anyway. Yeah, just wind him. Yeah. Check him in a minute for it anyway. I'll get the other one sorted. Here we go, bite number one. No, here we go. Ugh. Oh, come on, what am I doing? I'm missing them. Oh, what is going on? I missed three and four in a row now. Really? Yeah, here we go. I keep missing them, I'm gonna hook this one. Hook might have turned over in it. Oh, hang up. Oh, he's off. I was a bit slow on the hook up there, passing over. Bum bum, I failed again. Another loss for McGlashan. That's the way, that's the one you want. Look, I've even got a little entertainer for you. <laughs> We've got a new presenter. Oh, how are you doing there, Kurt? You're catching it? <laughs> trying to. Look at he's just like, I'll bite you if you do that. Yeah, yeah. There you, go. you can go back and do That's it. Oh, that's a better fish. There we go. And 
This one is dinner. It's a bit better. She's a bit bigger for you. Right. Check the space still. It might be a little bit, might be closer to size for you. Should be size. Yeah, look at that, mate. Bloody beautiful little fish. Lovely little fella. Oh, he's going to go. Oh, he's about six to He's probably right on. Oh, yeah. Professional, this job, you know. It's really dark. It's, it's really dark, yeah. Here. We'll let him go. He's sized, but I reckon we can get Kurt a slightly bigger one. Well done, mate. Well done. Well, we're getting you more fish, putting more water on the lens. But Kurt, we need a bigger one. We've got to get you a really good one. The yellowtail kingfish is one of Australia's most sought-after sport fish, especially in New South Wales, where numbers have rebounded tremendously after anglers stopped the dreaded floating fish traps. Fishing is so good these days, in fact, that places like Sydney, it is now rare not to catch a kingfish, which is completely the opposite to what it used to be, where they were a rarity. Coming up, I hook up onto something that has never been seen before on national television. Just coming up as a dead weight because I've caught a... What have I got on there? Oh, you're kidding me. Oh. No friggin' way. What I love most about fishing is the fact that you just never know what you're going to hook next. I got one as well. Oh, might have got you on the reef already. Hey, look, I've actually caught one now. <laughs> Just coming up as a dead weight because I've caught a. What have I got on there? Oh, you're kidding me. No friggin' way. No way. <laughs> Derek, have you ever seen this in your life? That is fantastic. That's the bloopers. Oh my god, I've always heard about it. Have a look at that! In appreciation for your hard work today, Kirk, we're going to present yeah. you with this beautiful Shimano outfit. Yeah, Holy moly! It's full of braid and everything. I'll back up for you. It's full of braid the whole lot. I think it was a... I don't even know what it is. I think that's an old, old... It is, it's a Shimano. Have a look at that. It's a bloody <laughs> Shimano. An old, old Calcutta. Yeah, I'll take you back up and stuff. Well, that is the way to catch a good fishing rod. Don't buy it when you can get it. Hey, Stu, look what I caught. Fishing rod. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I can't believe I caught a fishing rod. All right, I'll take you back up. You got into position? And bang, Kirk hooked up. Come on, Kirk. With a K. Remember, <laughs> I've got to apologise. You know, and this is what a professional I am. That, you know, I've done all the research, made sure I knew what he did and all that. I've been calling him Kurt, not Kirk. Oh, I think he's definitely going to take my job by the end of this trip. Total neglect. Yeah, yeah, it's too much of that Scottish. Oh. There we go. Well, I'm telling you, he's not 65, that one. That's a McGlashan special. Look at these guys. I've never had such a good audience. <laughs> well, we're definitely getting you the fish, mate, but I'm telling you... That's a little one. That's, that is shrinking. Yeah. They're not growing, they're shrinking. I've got to get him a good fish now. Stay still. This is just a... What we've done is one of our old baits, because it's been smashed a few times. So we just cut the backbone out, butterfly it. Kurt's going to put that down, reset that hook actually, and catch the biggest fish of the day. Because I'm still in the, the bad books because I kind of let go of the best fish. Go, no, no, we'll get a bigger one, we'll get a bigger one. And Oop. did we get a bigger one? And we haven't got a bigger one. So we're going to do one more drift. One more. Always one more drift. A lucky last. I can't help myself, can I? Alrighty, Kirk, this is it. This is our finale. I actually feel a little bit bad because Kirk's biggest fish was probably 68 or something like that. 
I let it go in anticipation of catching a bigger one. We're now out of bait. Kirk's got the last bait on. He hasn't got dinner. Starting real funny, isn't it? You just sit there, how good is this catching these little guys? Mutton birds are back on you again. Oh, he's a jumper. Okay, a little bit bigger, that one. Come here, buddy. Yeah, because the trick is with these guys is, is that light leaders on them. Yeah. There we go. See you, little buddy. No, they're pretty little fish, aren't they? Gorgeous. Well, we'll let him go, and I'll tell you what, it's been an absolute pleasure to finally take you fishing. We talked about it, we met up there and said, right, that's it, we're going to go for a fish. We finally did it. But you know what we're going to have to do? Have to go back out and get a bigger one down the track, I reckon. I think so. And remember, don't forget to check out the website, bfsb.com.au. And of course, follow us on Facebook. Coming up, we hook up to one of the biggest yellowfin ever seen off Sydney. After successfully catching Kurt, his first kingfish, reports of big tuna had us running out wide in near perfect conditions. And after a slow start, we found the birds and hooked up to the fish of a lifetime for Tom. Hang on, do that again, Tom. Feel the burn. Oh yeah! Stop corner. Are you over or under? Did that line go over? Big way over back. Okay, there we go. Keep going, buddy. And as you can imagine, Tom was just a little bit excited about catching one of the biggest yellowfin seen off Sydney in years. Woohoo! Catching a big thing like that, man, all my life. Woohoo! Yeah, baby! Woo! Put you back in Big yellowfin used to be common in New South Wales and were even regularly encountered on the inshore grounds. Sometimes even land-based anglers caught them. Sadly, this inshore fishery is largely gone today. Today, with increased pressure on tuna stocks by Persainas operating in the Western Pacific, Australia gets an overflow fishery, so most of our tuna are encountered way offshore.
Make yourself the complete angler by winning the ultimate fishing prize, a Bluefin Drifter 3.8 with casting deck and full floor. Powered by a Honda BF24 stroke, sitting pretty on a dumb beer trailer. Plus safety equipment and full comprehensive boat insurance with Club Marine. Registered, it's on the water, but that's not all. There's $1,000 worth of Shimano gear to get you into the action. That's a total of $12,000 in prizes. And how easy is it to enter? Just buy any product at the Complete Angler for your chance to win. For full terms and conditions, visit completeangler.com.au. The Complete Angler, supplying fishermen with the complete fishing experience since 1967. After that huge tuna, I headed inshore to the Middle Harbour Yacht Club to meet up with Club Marine's very own chef, Bart Beak. He promised to show me one of his very own recipes straight out of his new magazine, Gourmet Delight, on the How to Cook Tuna. What we need to do is, is cut that into um, about four centimetres, a little bit thicker, yeah, straight down the middle. Beautiful. Now if you can lay those flat, mm -hmm and divide them exactly in half. So the idea is we cut with the grain so that when yep. you slice it into Mount Bossot pieces, uh, you're going to have it across the grain, which is so much okay. more tender. So what you need to do is, is drive that in the bottom. So try straight into the centre? Straight in the centre all the way through. That's so the second there. best I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> so you do all, uh, do all three other skewers. So, there we go. so that's ready. I tell you, before we do that, yep. just going to um, add some extra um, aromatics to that. So what we do, some fresh rosemary oh. and the twigs straight on, and if you can find it, some good fresh sage. Gives that a, a beautiful aroma. And then we put the tuna on these little skewers. So this is a little skewer rack. Going to put them nice and close. And to be uh, fair to this product, which I respect, mm -hmm. 25 seconds each side. I'm going to keep spinning it round until it's just done. And you're going to make a classic garoi garoi sauce, which is Indonesian. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They you're make... intrigued with that, yeah, garoi garoi. Oh, look, it's easy. In fact, you're going to make it, and I reckon you're going to make this at home for the family. So what you need to do uh, is put in there a heap tablespoon of smooth peanut butter. What you need is some chilli, okay, a bit of attitude. So oh, yeah. I want a teaspoon and a bit of that. I'm going to take the tuna off and I'm gonna let it rest on that plate because I'm happy yep. with that. Okay, um, there's a bit of sourness. So Asian food is, is a balance of all those flavors yep. um, and senses. So we need some tamarind puree. Yep. And we need about a quarter cup of water. I'm just gonna put a little bit in yep. first. And we need sweetness. So this is this is palm, su uh, palm sugar and we, we, do, we just rip out a little cube of that. If you want Beautiful. to, with the side of a knife, just give that a... Uh, so you just... Yeah, just shave it. Just shave it down. Yeah, we need about a third of that. First bit's just disappeared straight over the side. So I'll whack that in the dish. Last little bit and in. And I want you to give that a stir. Start off slow stir. first so you don't spread it over your belly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just grind that up until that becomes um, well mixed. Just cut it straight through the, uh, straight through the middle straight. there, actually. Yeah, that's good. Look at that, perfect. So, yeah, that's that's absolutely spot on. And just a little touch of salt on the top of the. Uh, little bit. This is the uh, the seared tuna with nasi. Uh, with sorry, not nasi. With garo garoi, which is an Indonesian spicy salad, which so uh, so goes well with that tuna. Can't argue with that. That is absolutely awesome. You know what? We're going to go and test this out. Yeah, absolutely. And remember. What's the book? What's the magazine I should Gourmet say? Gourmet Delights by Club Marine comes out uh, mid-November uh, in every news agency and uh, in Australia and New Zealand. So now when you catch it, you can cook it as well. Now, there are three tips we can offer that will help you catch more fish, thanks to Club Marine magazine. Firstly, tip one, to avoid the mutton birds. Remove all burley from your burley bucket. If they can't smell it, they won't come in. Secondly, when trolling offshore for those big tuna, Try turning the boat to get your lures out of the wake and into the clean water. And finally, always, and I mean always, have your gas or tag pole ready just in case because you never know what's going to come up.